you pick up your cell phone, make a call, shoot a text, and don't think twice about it. The luxury of being able to stay connected has become a 21st century rite of passage, but that's unless you're locked up behind bars. The inmate call and service industry, or the ICS, has families with loved ones and the inmates themselves shelling out an estimated $1.2 billion a year in phone call costs. The three big boys of the industry, Global Telink, Securus, and Telmate, don't secure these contracts by providing the inmates and their families with good service. Instead, they reward state prisons with kickbacks. In Maryland, Global Telink has the exclusive contract with state prisons. The problem is, the facilities pick the vendor on the basis of who will provide the most money to back to the facility. GTL um, pretty much uh, exploits, exploits the people that, that use it by by constantly having you uh, put money on the phone by like in a means of debit or or through the institutional um, commissary. So, and so how often do you think you get phone calls from the, uh, your friends or your family in prison? Um, well, because of the phone, it costs too much. I haven't been getting it as many as I um, would like because I haven't been put, putting money on there lately. But um, when I was reading up, I was reading up like once a week, spending like, like $50 a week just to talk to my friends and family. A Maryland Department of Public Safety and Correctional Service employee sent a series of emails that shared that Maryland prisons receive almost $5 million worth of commissions from calls per year, a cost that families absorbed in the form of increased per minute rates. A large percentage of the costs of calls in Maryland's are due to kickbacks. My name is Reginald King, and um, everyone calls me Shabazz. Yes, I'm in uh, JCI, uh, just correctional institution, and I, I believe that's a part of the uh, part of this, this this whole cycle is to eliminate that 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 uh, that family bond because. Um, Without, without the family, who's going to complain? Who's going to have a problem with how, the treatment? And this is the only means of letting anybody know that, uh, that, that there's a problem immediately. For the 2.7 million children that have incarcerated parents, phone calls are a vital part of keeping their family connections. The high cost of phone calls is making it impossible or very difficult to maintain that connection with the families. Everybody don't have money to put on the phone. Everybody not fortunate enough to put $25 on the phone every week or $50 every two weeks. You know, everybody not that fortunate. So if the phone calls was free to a lot of people, like a lot of kids be able to talk to their fathers and stuff like that. People go home as strangers when they get out. There are 700,000 inmates who are released back into society each year, and the majority of them who cannot afford to keep in touch go home as strangers. What does that mean? There is a family dynamic that has been broken. It hasn't had a chance to repair itself. And there, that consequence results in 75% of them going back in within five years. Well, what, what happens is the, the more prisoners stay in contact with their family, their children, their loved ones, their friends, the more likely it is that they will maintain those bonds when they return to society. Yeah, because, we, I mean, we don't talk in weeks and stuff, so then it's like, when you do talk to them, it's like, you just making sure each other are right, because really, and then the phone calls don't last that long, so you really can't even talk about everything that you want to talk about. These are some of the poorest families in our country, and they're forced to choose between paying the rent, paying for food, and paying for these phone bills to keep their families together. Although the FCC finally took steps 
to putting a cap on per minute rates for prisoners from state to state in 2013, prisoners placed most of the phone calls in their home state, allowing the predatory practice of charging exorbitant rates to continue unchecked. Hello, my name is Robert Price. Um, when it comes to the prison system, it's, it's horrendous. It's a scary place to be. It's, it's like a cesspool of just violence, basically. You know, there's no help in there, no reform. It's, it's, it's like living hell, basically. That's what prison is about, from my understanding, what I know about. The calls, I could say they they a lot. 40 cents for the first three minutes, then four cents every minute after that. But you only get 15 minute calls, five hours, every five hours a day. I mean, every five hours throughout the day. It's hard. It's hard. That's all I can tell you about prison. It's real hard in there. Most of my calls are, are out of the local area. So just for, for the first, for the acceptance of the call is $3. And for each additional minute, it's 30 cents. So. Um, to call my, my family in Virginia, you know, is it, it, it's, it's astronomical numbers. So it, it, for a half an hour, I'm spending practically $16, $17 for a half an hour phone call. And most of the time, uh, the system is rigged to a point where though the phone will constantly hang up. And there was a, a sort of a tug of war, so to speak, between state authorities who said the FCC did not have jurisdiction over that, that they do, and what we feel is our ability to do so. Um, I asked for over a year and a half for the states to weigh in and reform, because I knew from a, 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 a legal standpoint, from a challenge standpoint, that that would be the easiest way. Only, less, only a handful of them re replied. It was very obvious after a year and a half that the only way for this to move was through this agency. And so we are going to move and take care of the entire pie as it relates to inmate calling rates. We feel that we have to do, we feel that we have the, the, uh, the, the authority to do so, and I know, according to the Communications Act, we have the mandate to do so, so we will do so essentially becomes a tax by which the poorest people in this country are asked disproportionately to pay for the services of the prison system. That's just backwards, and that's not what this country is supposed to do. Case in point, to open up an account for a, an inmate, it's not uncommon for them to pay $9.50 to open an account. To maintain a monthly account, to keep that open, it's not uncommon for it to be $2.99 a month. To add money to a depleted account, it's not uncommon for there to be a charge of $4.75 each time you add. If you only have $10 a month to contribute, the over half of that is gone. Is this frustrating and maybe like harming the bonding and the relationship that you have with your family or friends by being forced to miss them for weeks at a time because of lack of money or the slow transition? Yeah, it's frustrating because it's frustrating because you have to wait so long for them when you get the money order. They have to wait like two to three weeks um, for them to even process the money or to put the money on their account. And then they have to wait until they can be able to put the money on the phone. And then far as, and then with the writing, you think you'll write them, you'll get in contact with them faster, but then they tell you the mail backed up. And yeah, it's very frustrating when you ain't talked to your loved one in two, three weeks and you, and then you get on the TV and you hear how people dying over the jail. So it's like, you be worried and concerned. And um, a lot of times, I be happy when I hear from them. Even when they just call me and I don't have no money on the phone and they just call and they tell me that, you know, it is say their name or whatever, but I just be happy just to know that they still alive. While the FCC is working on capping the per minute cost of intrastate phone calls, advocates are worried that the companies like Global Telling will just shift the cost to other unregulated fees, like account maintenance and connection fees. It's even costing inmates or their families a fee 
to refund the balance on their accounts if they leave prison or and transfer it to another one. But what should the FCC really be focusing on changing? Although, actually, I don't know if the FCC needs to ban commissions. Mm -hmm. What the FCC needs to do, though, is make sure that the rates charged to families are as low as possible. If the companies want to share some of their profits, to be honest, I don't care. But I'm very concerned about the ways in which the companies exert influence through the commissions, through campaign contributions, through making donations to sheriff-controlled charities. All these are abuses that come at the expense of the families. So the, I think the FCC needs to do is to make sure that the rates and fees are as low as possible. One thing we concentrate a lot on the rates, we don't often concentrate on the charges which they all ultimately have to pay. It's not just about what they pay per minute. It is about ultimately at the bottom line, what is costing uh, those who are receiving and, and making those calls. And so we have to be very careful and mindful of uh, that the rates do not, the cost, the burdens do not shift in other ways that, um, that would have at its impetus, I'm um, trying to make up the difference, so to speak, um, here. Uh, we need to make sure that what families pay is what we know and it's affordable, it's equitable, and that word I don't use often is fair. We reached out to Global Telling for comments, and our calls weren't returned. But in a statement, they said this, Inmate calling services are not susceptible to one-size-fits-all federal regulations, nor are they required to be. While prisons say their objectives is to keep the city safe from the criminals of society, how is being in bed with corporations like Global Telling advancing that agenda? How is depriving inmates of their loved one's support going to do it? Studies have shown that when inmates are able to keep in touch via the phone, it lowers recidivism. Over the jail, I, I be hearing like how it was set up, like they only can come out for an hour. So you got all these people trying to get on the phone. So a lot of times, people just, I know a lot of my friends tell me they just call, they gonna call me once a week because it be so much stuff going over the jail. So they gotta choose when they come out, if, if they can, gonna take a shower, or if they gonna go to rec, or they gonna use the phone. So they, they have to choose. And a lot of people try to choose the phone, but when you have, 50 people in front of you and you only got an hour. Five phones. Right. We need to keep families together. And anything that we do that makes it harder for families to stay in touch with each other is bad for the families, it's bad for the people who are in prison. It's really what my grandmother would call penny-wise and pound foolish. In the interest of making a buck off of families, we're willing to make our societies weaker and spend more on prisons. That's just backwards. I cannot speak on how and what I could do to change it all. But I can say to you that having a sane and equitable and reasonable calling structure rates for those who are calling and receiving calls from facilities would be one important step for this, for reform, for equity, and honestly, I don't use this word often, but for fairness. You could have a number of solutions. Probably the most equitable one would be to allow phone calls to be free a certain amount per prisoner per week for their families. Uh, and then in addition to that, if you needed to make more phone calls, then you could charge a minimum fee for that. Uh, I think that would go a long ways toward bonding and uh, families and keeping prisoners in touch with their community and their loved ones. For Rattling the Bars, this is Eddie Conway.